guys, it's Sarah, the owner and creator of Multifarious Nature. Thank you for joining me today. Um, if you are new and uh, if you're a returning viewer, I'm so glad that you're back. And I have some uh, very exciting news for you guys. So for, uh, let's just start right with the shop update here. Um, and then I'll get into the work in progress shop update. But super exciting news. I just wanted to share it with you guys right away. Uh, because I'm sure you've noticed more and more people are talking about advent calendars, um, yarn advent calendars in particular, uh, because they do take quite a bit of time to prepare and many uh, indie dyers are starting now <laughs> with the dyeing process and um, pre-orders. So I wanted to let you guys know because I'm very excited. This is my first time doing it. Um, I am going to do an advent calendar for 2021. Um, so for this year, there is going to be an advent calendar for Multifarious Nature. It is going to be a very limited quantity because it's just me dyeing it. So um, I might do it on two bases. I'm At the moment, I'm really focusing on just one base, um, but I might end up doing it on two bases. But primarily, um, the base I want to do it on and I'm going to do it on is a uh, Peruvian Highland wool base, which I've talked about. Uh, my All the Lights cardigan is in my Peruvian Highland wool base. It is, um, I've actually <laughs> Googled the description for you guys because some people aren't familiar with Peruvian Highland wool. And I, I've referred to it before as my more rustic wool that I have in my, as a base, but it's not, uh, it's not rustic in the sense that it's, I don't know, people think rustic, they think itchy. It's not itchy. Uh, so when I googled it, this is what Google says for Peruvian Highland wool. Um, it is a crossbreed of sheep. So it is a Corydale and Merino crossbreed. So they, uh, they consider it, it's famous for its softness, naturally strong and beautiful. So, I mean, if you think of it, Merino is very soft. Most uh, wools that we find that are blends, most of the bases that I carry are merino nylon, merino silk blends. They're very, very soft. Uh, even 100% merino, very soft. So that is the same thing with Peruvian Highland wool. The difference is Peruvian Highland wool is a non-superwash. So it hasn't been treated where superwash wools have been treated to make them uh, slip and slide more, um, just the way that their drape is, everything. So when you work with Peruvian Highland wool, because it is non-superwash, it is fluffier. Uh, it has, it takes on amazing stitch definition. It's excellent for uh, color work. It's excellent for sweaters. Uh, I mean, you can use it for anything. You can do shawls and um, socks, things of that nature, but uh, it's especially excellent for sweaters. And uh, I can show you again. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you in more detail this, but this is that all the lights card again. Like I said, this is is scarlet colorway of my from my multifarious nature yarn, um, but it is that Peruvian Highland wool. So you can see the beautiful definition, and it just really fluffs up. And I'm sure that um, when I block this as well, it's gonna get even more of a bloom going on. That's the thing you notice with non-superwash wool as well. It blooms beautifully and that means that the hairs just open up and so if you want something really warm it's going to really provide a wonderful fabric that's warm. So the advent calendar is going to be 24 mini skeins that are 20 grams each and um, then there's going to be more information about this, guys, in the future, so please keep an eye on Instagram. I'm going to post on Instagram below as well. I will uh, post there as soon as the pre-order is open. It's not open yet, but it will be very, very soon. <laughs> and um, the I wanted to show you just a few more colors that I have dyed on the Peruvian Highland wool, just so you can get an idea of how this takes color. It's beautiful. And... Um, these colors are not the colors for the advent. I'm not going to show you guys those colors. I am not going to do that at all. When I do post the pre-order, I will give you um, a, the inspiration photo that I'm going to be working from for the colors. It's just so you get an idea of 
you know what it will be. Um, so as I said, 24 mini skeins, 20 grams each. It will also include a 100 gram full size skein of the Peruvian Highland wool for um, to the 25th of December, so Christmas Day. And um, for those of you that aren't familiar with the yarn advent calendars, that's what it is. They they do vary the sizes. Um, some do 12 days. I'm going to do the 25 days. And I'm going to also include um, some fun things throughout the calendar. Um, so, and they will be multifarious in nature <laughs> items. So that'll give you a little bit of a hint if you've looked in my shop. These items are going to be made specifically for the advent calendar. So they're not items I currently have in stock. But um, yeah, I'll just kind of give you that hint, <laughs> if you will. But these are all mystery mini skeins that I have in my shop currently. So I guess I'm kind of giving away Mr. Minis, but this is these are all on the Peruvian Highland wool base. So you can just see how, how they all look. We have this gorgeous, really deep blue. And it has little uh, hints of black in there. And then we have this gorgeous green. And this is to show you the brighter colors as well. I tend to dye darker, um, more jewel toned colors because that's what I gravitate towards. But um, I do have some fun, I, I call my Mr. Mini skeins, a lot of them are lucky strikes. So they're just really fun colors when I was playing around with color. So this is one of those. And this is a nice neutral. And then of course we have another fun bright color of a, like a lilac color. So that just gives you an example of how this base takes color. It's beautiful. It works wonderfully. You can see that beautiful fluffy yarn. And it is super soft. You can wear this easily next to the skin. Um, it's not itchy at all. Because, I mean, it is a, um, a merino crossbreed. So, like I said, many people find merino, including myself, but people that I've, I've heard are very sensitive to other wools, find merino to be extremely comfortable and they're, they want to have items made out of it. So, uh, that's a little sneak peek. Please keep an eye on Instagram. I will post more there. You can follow me on Instagram. I will, of course, announce it in the video as well. But um, this is just a little preview for you guys and to give you a heads up because there will be a very limited quantity uh, because I am doing it all myself. So, Advent calendar this year for Multifarious Nature. Very, very exciting. And, um, like I said, the pre-orders will be up very soon here, um, early May. I will put that pre-order up, so please keep an eye out for that. So let's get into that uh, work in progress. Oh my gosh, <laughs> my brain. Okay, or I was on like Advent, you know, it's in my head. I'm so excited about it. Anyway, <laughs> work in progress, all the lights cardigan by Hoki Lovatelli. I have, how much did I work on this? I worked on it quite a bit, but I worked on my other project a bit more because uh, it was a week where I just needed to do something basic because this is not basic. But here's the exciting part. So here's where I left last week. So I was still working on this section. Finished that section. I told you there's only a couple inches left. So I finished that section and now I have joined it all in the round. So I've joined the front two panels. All right, I guess not joined in the round, but um, joined them, the front panels to the back panel. There we go. <laughs> so you can see they're not really connected in the front. It's not actually connected there. Um, and working back and forth from one side of the front to, around the back to the other side and back again. And again, this is a paid for pattern, but I don't think I'm giving too much away. 
Uh, but now I am working down the whole body of the front and back. And uh, so far, so good. But it is very tedious, wonderful. And because I love working with my, my yarn. I love working with the, the Peruvian Highland wool. It's super fluffy, soft. It has a wonderful bounce and stretch to it as you work with it. I just, I, I do, I do love working with it. It's the, it's the project that is just very intense and very, it's very detail oriented, which I am, but when I come home from work, I just want to unwind. And this project sometimes takes so much focus that I can only work on it for so much. And then like just a couple rows. And then I am like, okay, I need, I need to stop. I need to work on something that I can just knit and almost not even look at it while I'm knitting kind of thing. So, but it's looking really nice. So you can see that, that lace work going down the back with the bobbles and then we've got this um there's like a texture stitch um erin cabling and then we've got more texture stitch and then there's the beautiful texture stitch on the sides of the front i really like the texture stitch a lot i think that it's really easy to do too so so that's really nice and, and you can probably find that in many patterns that texture stitch but she's uh, cause she's got a bunch of different stitch patterns and stuff going on in this this um, cardigan. So I'm not gonna be able to try it on at the moment because you can see I've got the needles on hold because I'm using these needles <laughs> in my other sweater as so I'm constantly switching needles back and forth. But you can see progress. And again, this is that scarlet colorway uh, from Multifarious Nature. There we go was blasted out there for a second, but this is the colorway. So it's a beautiful red if you're looking for a really nice um, tonal red. This is the key and I've alternated skeins. So I did um, every other row with a different skein. So I'm working with two balls of yarn at the same time and I'm loving the way it's turning out. I mean, just it's the stitch definition is absolutely amazing, and I've worked with merino quite a bit, merino nylon, and it's beautiful for drape and all of that. But when it comes to like this is a merino, I want to say merino silk cashmere blend that I have here. Um, this is uh, expression fiber arts yarn, and it has a wonderful drape to it. But it's not, it's, this is also lace weight <laughs> held double, but just looks very different from a beautiful non-superwash yarn. So this is again, that Peruvian Highland wool, non-superwash. So if you're looking for a non-superwash, which I know there are people out there that do not want to use superwash, this is a wonderful option. So, and that's a base I carry. So. If you see any colors in my shop that you want on Peruvian Highland wool, please let me know and I can dye that up for you. Okay, so more work in progress. This is the one I have worked so much on this week because it's stuck in it. It's just knitting in the round. It's wonderful. This is the forager sweater and I tried it on. So right now I've got it on the bigger cable. Actually, it's two cables that are connected, so it's super long so that I could try it on and not have the stitches fall off the needle because that would be horrific. But um, here we go. There's the front. So here is where you guys saw it last, last week. So I've done a lot of knitting, <laughs> a lot of knitting. And again, this was just stuck in it. And then now I've got the ribbing, which is a one by one ribbing. And uh, this is a paid for pattern, but so I'm not gonna go into like, I guess the details of it, but it cut this. So her pattern gave you directions on how to do a split hem. So it has like a little V on the sides. 
uh, or you could do just a rib in the round ribbing in the round and I preferred the ribbing in the round again I like longer sweaters I don't want it to be super short and I feel like with that split hem it's just gonna make it feel shorter so I did it in the round but even I tried it on this is the length and everything that she called for in the pattern for the longer version and it still is too short for me I want it longer so I'm going to knit an extra two inches to the length that it calls for and um so I'm not done yet. I thought I was going to be binding the bottom off <laughs> and then I'd be on sleeve island here, but no, I'm not going to be. I still have to do two inches of the ribbing on the bottom and then I will be happy because the length will be, for me, more comfortable. But I love this pattern. Again, this is that uh, Forager sweater by Melody Hoffman and it's using that Stonehenge Fiber Mills wool uh, is the shepherd's wool and it is in the milk chocolate colorway. This is a local to me yarn, some Michigan's milled yarn. So there's one thing that so far, one like little blurb that I found and I've, I'm not the only one that has had this issue. I, I've heard others. But, um, so they're short rows with wrap and turns that you create the back and everything. Well, you can probably see this really blatant gapping going on right here, and that's the last wrap and turn. And it just, <laughs> it's like a hole. And I mean, you can see it there, but when you try it on, like, I could definitely see it, so... It's not, I don't think it's that complicated to fix. I have an idea of how I'm going to just like tack down um, that, like to tighten up the stitch. I have an idea of how I'm gonna do that and that'll then close it up. But so far that's the only thing other than the fact that apparently I cannot follow <laughs> raglan directions that are written, I don't know. I don't understand it so I had to just do it a little differently for myself with the, the raglan. I've had this issue with other patterns it's definitely um, user error I don't know why but loving this loving this I'm almost to the point where I'm working on the sleeves almost there I am pretty sure by next weekend I will be working on the sleeve at least like one of the sleeves so, because I feel confident that I can at least finish the ribbing by next weekend. So that is the Forger sweater. Love that. Very nice project. And then um, the other one, which I didn't put in my notes because I lost my mind here for a second, but it is a cowl. It's the Croil Cowl. I know I'm not saying that right, but again, I'll include it in the notes below. So I am working on that with, uh, it is a, um, So brioche in the round and it's just ba your basic brioche it does not have any at least that I'm aware of <laughs> any brioche increases or decreases so super easy you do have to pay attention a little bit with brioche because otherwise you make mistakes which I did because some you do like it's a free pattern so you do a row of the brioche pearl and then you'll do a row of the brioche knits and when you switch between the two sometimes I find I start brioche purling again just because it feels quicker which is really weird because I'm sure you well I don't know but a lot of people including myself when I do purling it feels like it takes a lot longer than knitting like knit stitches but when you're doing the brioche because brioche is um, 
you know, it's like knit one and then uh, slip one yarn over. Uh, there's also, or pearl, brioche pearl, and then slip one yarn over. And because of that, it just seems easier and more intuitive for your hands to do the slip one yarn over and then pearl, slip one yarn over, pearl. And it, I don't know, I feel like it goes a lot faster when you're doing that. So it's weird, but <laughs> yeah. So I'm using all kinds of yarn. I'm using um, a yarn from a chick that knits. It's in Onyx. And then I've got, again, my multifarious nature colorway that I dyed up, and this is in white pine. And then this one is one that I got from a thrift shop. So I have no idea, but it's um, a merino. Pretty sure it's a merino blend of some kind. If not, pure merino. So I took those. I am alternating the uh, white pine colorway my multifarious nature colorway with that one from the thrift store. So I started with that thrift store colorway, did a few rows, and then I started alternating. So you can see it's one row of the white pine and then that uh, blue variegated colorway, white pine blue, and I just keep going like that. And then I have that beautiful onyx, that black colorway as the background color, as the contrast. So it really gives it a nice contrast that's the wonderful thing about brioche, you get this beautiful stretch. <laughs> and this is going to be, you can't really tell at the moment, <laughs> but it will be a large enough cowl that you can um, double it over where it doubled so that it would do this beautiful number here. You can see, just it's really nice. So I still have quite a few inches to do because it's eight inches of this brioche. So. I'm probably about five inches in. <laughs> this is where I left you guys last week, so I was just about an inch in. So I I really done a lot more. It's so squishy. It's really nice. I uh, I love brioche. I haven't done a lot of brioche, but when I do it, it's actually it's just um, it's a lot of fun, and uh, one of I think. If not the first, one of the very first, it probably is the first shawl that I ever made, had brioche in it, and it was just so wonderful. <laughs> so nice and squishy. I do like that a lot. So that is that Creole cowl. And that is all the projects that I am working on currently. And I, oh, I almost forgot. <laughs> I told you guys I was going to talk about some cowls that I worked on recently because for some reason I went nuts and started making cowls just a couple weeks ago. I'm going to grab them. They're right over here. There we go. Okay. So these were, one is acrylic for sure. This is acrylic. And, pardon me, I need to look up the uh, pattern so that I can be politically correct and tell you the pattern if I have it here. If I don't, I will, uh... alright, I'll put it in the notes below, <laughs> and that, then you'll have it because I don't know, I, I put the pattern somewhere. It's hiding somewhere, there is a pattern and it's hiding. But this, these were also free patterns on Ravelry, and this is a really fun cowl. Okay, so for this one, they had directions on how to bind off, and it said it was a super stretchy bind off. Guess what? Not stretchy. It is not stretchy at all. <laughs> it's very structural. I mean, it helps it not get overly stretched out. It has this beautiful lace work going on but not stretchy. So you can only wear it one way, like this, you know? So you can only wear it that way. You can't like double it over, which I guess is kind of a bummer. I feel like you should be able to double it over, but um, it's still quite beautiful. And that was one that I worked on. 
This is just a couple weeks ago. And that was just a multicolored yarn. These are also both washed and blocked. I did block them. This one is also, this one I do not know the fiber content because it was from a thrift store, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, I want to say it definitely has wool in it, just based on the way it feels. Uh, it probably also has acrylic in it, but I want to say the like base of this yarn is actually a wool, just based on the way it feels, but I have no idea. No, wow, that really got blasted out. I have no idea what the actual content is, but it's really neat because it's this dark navy, not really even navy blue, it's like a teal blue, but really dark. And then it has um, some green fibers in there and then um, some like royal blue fibers in there. It's really, really pretty. And this has a really cool textured stitch and it's the textured stitch that I have in my All the Lights cardigan. It's in this pattern. So if you just want to see what a textured stitch is, it's it's in this pattern. And that's what it is. You'll do like stockinette and then it goes into the texture stitch for so many rows. So this is a nice structural cowl. So when you put it on, it's going to stay straight up and down more. It's not going to be as slouchy. It's definitely really going to be warm. So that was the aim with this one, um, was to make a warmer one, like a warmer cowl. So that is what this one is. So this was whipped up quickly as well. These both, both of these cowls uh, were whipped up pretty quickly. So I, I think I just needed something really quick and easy for some reason. So that's, oh, that's why I did the socks, <laughs> which you can see what I was going to tell you. Okay, so these stripey socks that I did and I showed them in the last video, you can see how, how like, I don't know, they're a little stretched out, like looking. So I found that that 64 stitches that the pattern calls for are, it's just too, I think, too wide of a sock, like the... Um, I need less stitches uh, for my foot so these are very comfortable don't get me wrong but I feel like they are still a little loose all the way around so I'm still trying to figure out my ideal sock like I said I got kind of sick and tired of socks when I had done them before and now I'm trying to take them on again but I'm still a little frustrated because it's still not right but you can see, I mean, it's like, they're, uh, they look really nice and they, I mean, they do fit good from the, like, look standpoint, but they're just a little loose. So, slight learning curve. Um, yeah, I think there's just too many stitches in the round for that, for that sock for me, but that's all right. I will find a pattern that will be good. Otherwise, um. It'll just be, you know, trying to figure out my recipe for my sock. You know, everybody's kind of, everybody's foot's different, so yeah. That is uh, that is that. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, life stuff. I'm trying to get into. <laughs> I've heard a lot of knitters recently and in the past months, like months, have talked about uh, skating. So I used to rollerblade a lot. And I know I had roller skates when I was really little um, because I remember them being at my parents' house. So I did use them probably when I was really little. But rollerblades is what I used when I was in, I want to say, gosh, middle school, high school, I rollerbladed quite a bit. I never did like tricks or anything crazy other than, you know, like um, maybe jumping the curb at home or, um, you know, stuff like that. So I never got into tricks or anything like that really, but, you know, skating backwards, doing that kind of stuff. And um, 
the crossover and all that. So I've been getting sucked into it. I want to get some roller skates and try that again. So that's kind of what I've been looking into right now lately. <laughs> um, just as another means of exercise, being outside. Um, yeah, I've been really interested in that. However, I have found it is extremely hard to get your hands on roller skates. And I think a lot of it has to do with the situation of 2020 and 21. There's just been such an influx in people trying to do things outside that they're all, which is great, you know, everybody's looking into fitness stuff and things like that, but it does make it hard because the manufacturers have cut back on their staffing and so there's just not as much items being produced to sell. So I've been looking, I've been looking for used items as well. I have no problem with pre-owned. So just trying to, trying to look for that, that pair that I'm going to use and I will share with you guys when I get them. And I haven't found them yet. I mean, I've narrowed down the brands that I'm interested in, but trying to actually get them is tricky. And, um, yeah. Oh, one other thing before I leave you, I bought stuff. There was a sale, so that's where I got caught. But uh, if you are someone who is looking for affordable, non-super wash wool, you can find it at local stores. So this is a company that's widely known. Uh, it is Lion Brand, I'm sure you've heard of it before. This is called Fisherman's Wool, and it is 100% wool. That's what it says, just 100% wool. There are multiple colors of Fisherman's Wool, and some of them are blends. So if you want just wool, you need to look at the label, because there are certain, like, um, some of the tweed ones that they have, so it's little speckles of color, that actually has, like, um, nylon in it or something like that to create that color. The ones that are solids, they're very natural looking in color. Those are 100% wool. So those are, I want to say, okay, so it doesn't tell you the fiber content other than wool. And I looked it up to try to see like what is the fiber content of the wool in the fisherman's wool. And it doesn't tell you. I cannot find anywhere where it tells you other than that it's non-superwash. Well, that's, I mean, that's great. But I just don't know. So my guess, this is my best estimate. I want to say it is a Highland wool. Like a merino uh, blend is what I would feel like. It feels like a merino blend because it's very soft. It's not, it's not itchy. So it feels a lot like the Peruvian Highland wool that I have in, in my store. The difference, the primary difference I notice between the two is that this, my Peruvian Highland wool is a lot, um, I guess, tighter of a twist. And, you know, it just, so it just feels like it's a little bit tighter. But it's, this is like the closest that I've found that's budget friendly so far that I've found that is a lot like it. So it would be a way you can get your hands on some and it's a lot. So this is um, 227 grams of yarn. So this is a lot of yarn. And it is, this is the oatmeal colorway. And my main reason for buying this <laughs> was because um, I wanted to get my whole, get my hands on some Plutolopi in the oatmeal colorway. That colorway is always sold out. It's always sold out. It's a beautiful neutral. That's what this is, oatmeal. And it's just, it's just a really nice neutral, like a off white color, cream color. And so I bought it <laughs> in um, the oatmeal colorway from Lion Brand. Now, the one thing to keep in mind, for those of you that don't knit a lot of um, garments, don't necessarily pay attention to what your label tells you because 
This is, so this skein is $12.99 a skein um, at my local store. It might be more at, at your store, but it's $12.99 for this massive ball of yarn that's um, non-super washed. That is a really good deal when it comes to um, just trying to get your hands on some non-super wash. I feel like that's a really good deal. One thing though, on, like I was saying, on this label, they'll usually give you like recommendations for how much yarn you'll need for like a sweater. And I don't know what sweater they're making, but the sweater recommendation says that you need seven. Seven of these. Now that's insane because But that's insane. <laughs> the reason why I say that's insane is that my, for example, my forager sweater that I'm currently working on calls for, for my size, approximately 400 grams of yarn. So this one massive ball is 227 grams of yarn. So two of these equals my sweater. <laughs> So I don't, I don't know where they're getting that seven balls of yarn because if, yeah, if you buy seven of these, that would be very expensive and you'll probably end up with like three extra skeins, if not more. So don't, I mean, that's why, even though I know it's so tempting to sometimes buy yarn because you're like, oh, I'm just going to buy a sweater's quantity and I'll use it on some sweater in the future, but I don't know what that sweater is going to be. Don't always look at the label because if this, if I had looked at that label and went, I want to buy enough for a sweater and it says to buy seven, that is a ridiculous amount of yarn. Like that's a lot of yarn. So um, I, what I recommend is maybe find a sweater that you, that looks like a, like a standard sweater um, because I feel like cabled sweaters, you don't knit those a lot. So unless you're going to be buying it for one, um, just get a pattern like the Forager where it's a nice classic sweater, maybe raglan, something like that. And uh, based off of that weight of like what they recommend for your size, just kind of like either put that in your phone or whatnot. So if you're at the store and you find something like this where it's a really good deal and it's something you've been looking for, then you have an estimate that'll be a really good estimate based on pretty much any sweater that you make. And you'll have enough yarn for it. And I'm probably going to make either another forager with this or another just really basic uh, little cardigan or cardigan <laughs> sweater. Probably a sweater. I don't make a lot of cardigan sweaters. I like. So yeah, it's Lion's Brand Fisherman's Wool. So I picked up two skeins of that. Um, that's more than enough. It's going to be, I think, like, yeah, 450 yards or yards grams and and the yardage is 465 yards in here so it's a lot of wool that is a lot of wool so um you can get that at like local craft stores i want to say um if not you could probably buy it online i did see i could buy that online if i wanted to so more uh, a budget friendly easy to access possibly uh, yarn. So keep that in mind if you're looking for a non-superwash because I do find it is hard to sometimes find non-superwash um, in a reasonable price sometimes. So that is one that you could probably find. So I just wanted to share that with you guys. But I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. I hope you're, you're happy. I hope you're healthy. And I hope you're creating something. And uh, I hope you're getting outside and having beautiful weather by you. Um, we have beautiful weather today. It's a little bit cold, which is why I'm wearing my sweater, but um, really, really nice out. So again, have a great rest of your week, and I will see you next week. Bye.